Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick demo of the uh, HTC Sense TV feature on the new HTC One. Um, very first time that you actually start up with this, I'm just going to go back out to the uh, TV app. So the very first time that you start this up, uh, you tap on the TV icon and then it will basically ask you, uh, do you want to set up a uh, TV, uh, do you want to set up a cable box or do you want to set up a home data system? Yeah. And then it's a case of just choosing the, uh, the brand names. Uh, if it doesn't have the right brand in there, you can check other and the infrared port that you see on the top just here, which doubles as the power button, you actually hold another remote up to it and you actually learn the remote buttons off your previous remote as well. That's good. So you've got the major ones like Sky, uh, TiVo, uh, Virgin, Correct. Right. That's, like that. that's the most simple thing about this because when, um, when you first go into your TV or your set-top box, it'll actually just ask you where you're located. So you'd say UK, for example. Um, and in the UK, it'll say, OK, have you got Virgin? Have you got um, FreeSat? Have you got FreeView? Have you got Sky? Yes. And then it'll ask you for your postcode. So then it knows oh, the region. Right, yeah. So cool. back in Manchester for me, obviously you've got like um, Northwest tonight, for example, so it's regional. Again, it'll know the region. And then what it'll do is it very simply pulls through your, um, populates your, uh, your EPG and your guides. Normally it has your thumbnails here. Um, obviously we're over in Barcelona at the moment. This um, is run off the uh, Spanish cable network um, Canal Plus. Yep. Um, so this is the very first screen that you tend to come to. Uh, I don't know if you can see, normally these are represented with thumbnails, but just underneath the thumbnails, a little blue line, a little blue line tells you how far along the programme actually is, so whether you're just catching the beginning of it or whether it's just right at the end. Yeah, I got that, yeah. The three little dots that you can see, uh, if I tap on the three little dots, what it'll do is it'll bring through the programme information, and that's a synopsis of it. You'll probably see that the, uh, the little add series button just pops up at the bottom there. It gives you the ability to normally favourite something or highlight it and share it with friends, um, just like it's on here now. If you favourite it, it'll actually pump into your Blink feed as well to remind you later on that you know, you've got your favourite episodes of Simpsons coming on or, or that sort of thing if you want to watch that. So, very simple. You've got now showing on TV just here. You've got showing next on TV and it scrolls down. If you're interested in Facebook, it also populates Facebook videos through that and you can throw that onto your TV via um, Media Link. If I tap on one of these channels now, as they're now showing, so if I tap on this channel here, you see the numbers appear just on the TV just there and the TV's now changed onto that channel. Okay, can you just do that just one more time with another yeah, one? Sure. I'll just uh... another channel. There we go. So it's going three, two, five, and it's now changed it onto uh, cable one. Oh, that's good. Now, some cool little parts about it as well. You can probably see at the top there. We've got recommended. So if I tap on that, it just drops down. So we've got recommended movies, TV programs, sports, social. Now, quite a lot of people look for the channel guide. So it's normally called like an EPG or an electronic program guide. And you'll probably see here, this is quite familiar to most set-top boxes that you tend to find. So you have like your uh, upcoming, you can scroll through your channels, you can favourite it. And again, when you tap on a programme, you can see the series links and stuff behind it. Yeah. Could I maybe like um, set it to record stuff with, you know, like yep. boxes that can record? Yep, no problem. So um, on the top, just next to recommended, we've got the power button, which when you tap on that, you can turn the TV on and off, you set up top, top, top box on and off change your inputs on your TV if you want to and then the next one that you were just asking for is the remote so when you tap on the remote it gives you full functions up down left right your menu buttons um, your volume is on the screen but you can also use the volume on the on the TV so, uh, so on the side of the uh, device so if I just move that you'll see it on the TV that's cool okay so I'm just going to turn that down a little bit on the bottom here you'll find that they've also got some numbers so in case you've got a free view device obviously you can punch the numbers in and then the very last one was the one that you were just asking about, which is uh, ability to, if your set-top box has uh, pause, play, skip, rewind, um, and record features, so you have that all in there. Just on the top, you'll notice this one's actually called Remote 1. Yeah. If you wanted to, sorry, just go back into that. Um, if you wanted to, you could actually have a uh, remote setup for downstairs, so your living room, so you could have a TV uh, set-top box downstairs. Upstairs you might be lucky enough to have another TV and another set-top box. You can actually select another profile for upstairs and that way you, you can control both. Can you maybe do this for like radio stations, uh, radios or anything that have remote control or stereo so, systems? So at the moment we've got um, TVs, we've got uh, set-top boxes and we also have home theatre systems. Um, it has got the ability to learn a remote control if need yeah. be. So basically it'll just ask you what is the power on and you hold down that on the corresponding remote and it basically says, right, okay, I know that now. So technically, you should be able to, to program. Can I call these my own names, like bedroom TV or... 
something if, like that. If you want bedroom TV, uh, <laughs> yes, of course you can. Yeah. So um, when if I go into here and add a remote, the very first thing that it tends to ask you is what do you want to call it. Oh, no, that's so right. yeah, you can add it as bedroom remote and all that sort of stuff if you want to. Yeah, totally. So why do you think HEC have chosen to put infrared in, which you know to most people they thought that will never reappear in a phone, instead of using like. I know a lot of smart TVs, so you can control them through Wi-Fi and stuff. Yeah. Is so it just practicality? Yep. Yeah, so basically, with smart TVs, you're kind of limited by what device you have, what model you have, what software version it runs, everything. With infrared, it's been around for quite a long time. You know, people have used it in infrared remotes for absolutely ages. Yeah. Every TV still has an infrared remote. Every set-top box still has an infrared remote. All we're doing is combining it into a product that people can actually extend their viewing experience back onto the couches, you know, interact with the TVs. Um, a little thing for me is that on my TV service back at home, when I sit down with my girlfriend, if I go to see what's on later on, TV, when I bring the uh, electronic program guy up, it goes into a small corner of the screen yeah. so that I can see the rest of it. Uh, whereas now, she can watch the program, I can just browse the electronic guide on my phone. You know what's going up, yeah. Know what's coming up later, set a series link for it, see it in my blink feed later on, and then take it from there. 